Okay, there was a question on how do I find the derivatives of trig functions, specifically trig functions that are a quotient of two functions. <clears throat> so let's tackle this will be good review of quotient rule and of course our trig derivatives as well. So I'm assuming that we know the, der the derivative rule for quotient rule, so I'm going to say it, but I'm not going to write it out. Feel free to grab your notes if you need to. So derivative is denominator times derivative of the numerator, so I'm going to write it as 1 plus cotangent x times, before I take the derivative, I just like to note that I'm taking the derivative, so derivative of cotangent x. Then I can just make sure I get my rule correct. Minus numerator, which is cotangent x, times derivative of denominator, which is 1 plus cotangent x. All over the denominator squared, which is 1 plus cotangent x quantity squared. I'm going to encourage you to leave the denominator alone. Don't even worry about multiplying that out. It's going to turn into a mess. So just leave it. In fact, I'm just going to carry it down. Um, it's a good idea to rewrite it, just so you don't forget it. Uh, so let's go ahead and this time I'm going to rewrite, and this time I'm going to actually do those derivatives. So 1 plus cotangent x, keeping that part the same. And now I'm going to take a look at what is my derivative of cotangent x. So hopefully remembering that is a negative, since it's a c, negative cosecant squared of x. Minus cotangent x, not changing that. And then derivative of this piece is derivative of 1, which is 0, so that's going to go away. Derivative of cotangent x is, again, my negative cosecant squared x. And denominator, like I said, just rewrite it so you don't forget about it. 1 plus cotangent x quantity squared. And then I'm just going to look and see if I can simplify it. So I do usually take the time to multiply out the numerator, um, because when I multiply out the numerator, usually something good will happen and hopefully something will cancel out or I can combine terms. So I am going to go ahead and do that and we'll see what we end up with. So when I multiply that out, um, essentially I'm going to distribute this and I'm going to get a negative cosecant squared x and then minus cotangent x times cosecant squared x. So those are being multiplied together and essentially I had a binomial times a monomial ended up with two terms there. And then minus, this is just one thing being multiplied by another, so I'm not going to end up with two terms there, just one term. Actually, it's a minus and, and then a negative here, so it's going to end up being a positive. I'm going to correct that right now. That that's going to be a positive plus cotangent x times cosecant squared x all over 1 plus cotangent, uh, whoops, 1 plus cotangent x quantity squared, not cotangent squared. And then I'm going to take a look at it and see what I can simplify. So like I said, hopefully maybe something will simplify and it looks like I have a cotangent cosecant squared and a cotangent cosecant squared. And that term is a positive, this one's a negative. So those are in fact going to cancel out. So I can get rid of those, leaving me with a fabulous y prime equals, I believe my final answer is going to be a negative cosecant squared x over 1 plus cotangent x quantity squared. And perhaps we could simplify that more if we really wanted to. The only time I would really want to is if I was going to try to factor it, set it equal to 0, or do something further with it. So right now, I would leave it like that and call it good. Hope that helped.